Welcome to Film Riot. If you follow us on Instagram or Twitter, you probably know that Film Riot turned 10 years old last week. 10 years old! 10 years old, which is crazy. And we haven't done anything for that because it kind of just hit at the worst possible time. We were out of town for almost two weeks and then there was other stuff going on behind the scenes that took our attention away. So we weren't able to actually put anything together. We are, however, trying to put together some kind of an event. Hopefully, not sure if we could do it yet, put together something cool where we could meet some of you guys in person. And if we can, we'll definitely tell you as soon as possible. So whoever wants to come can plan as far out as possible. But 10 years, that means if somebody started watching this from episode one at 13 years old, they are now 23. That made me feel weird. I know. And I don't like that. Just very old. <laughs> so let's stop thinking about how I'm getting old and talk about directing. My question is, I see films as a collaborative act of art, but it is still the vision of the director, right? How much freedom do you give your actress and actors? Thanks. I talk about it sometimes and like to think of it as this giant highway all going in the same direction. You might be in this lane and originally think everybody's going to be in this lane, but they all veer off in different lanes. And as long as they're all headed in the same direction, that is totally fine. And what I mean by that is as long as it's still servicing the tone, story, and intention of the original piece, then, you know, whatever makes it the actor's own, whatever, you know, will make it natural to them, those things are fine as long as it's staying within the same intention. That's what you're always trying to do. You're guarding the story, but giving everybody as much leeway as possible to add their voice to this choir you're creating, but you're singing the same song. The second they start singing different lyrics, well then it no longer makes any sense and you have to rope that in. So it's all about keeping them on the same path. And that's what it is with the director as the captain of the ship. It's all this one unified vision. That one unified vision is just you guarding the story and making sure everything is servicing that. So if the actor switching up the wording of the script makes it more natural for them to say, but it's still getting the exact same intention, I am totally fine with that. And I do like to give everybody as much leeway as possible to go nuts and try things and surprise me. And more often than not, they do. These are really talented people that you're bringing in to do the things that you can't do. I can't act, you know, I can't do cinematography like the cinematographers I've worked with can. I can't edit like Lucas can. I can't do the music like Daniel can. All of them are bringing insane expertise and experience to your piece. So it's your job to then convey what it is that you're trying to accomplish within the scene, within the film as a whole. And if you can get them to understand that and get on the same highway as you before you even get there, well then when they start bringing their own notes into the song, they already know, you know that scale. So they're only gonna bring the notes that fit into that scale and it's all gonna be in harmony. And then it's just shifting them this way a little bit, that way a little bit when they're making decisions that don't quite land, but you're giving them, that's your job. You're giving them that leeway to kind of stumble on the tightrope and you're there to make sure they stay on it. And by doing that and giving everybody that leeway, but staying on that same highway, that's really when you elevate the piece from what you originally thought it was going to be into this thing you know, that becomes 10 times better than you ever thought it could be. When directing, how much control do you take over each shot? Do you let the DP figure out most of it or do you take control over the whole thing? And if it's somewhere in the middle, how do you determine that? Again, I think you know your relationship with your DP uh, should be forming and you should be talking about all these things before you ever get on set. So you're on the same page before you ever get into production. But I kind of treat my DP the same way I treat actors. I know before time exactly how I want the scene to play. I see what I want my actors to be doing, how they I even want them to say things I want them to say. And in the same way, I'm a very visual director. I know what lenses I want to use. I know where I want the camera to go. I know at what speed I want it to move, when it is moving, when it's not. But you still want to give leeway to your performers and to your DP to again surprise you to think up things that are better and again if you're communicating your story and your intention then they're going to be able to bring their voice into that as well and their suggestions to help elevate what it is that you're trying to do which happens on every film that uh, uh, I direct my DP is always coming to me with okay I see what you're trying to do here but if I think if we do it this way it's going to be a lot more effective and they're usually right you know if you're accomplishing the same thing if they have an idea that pretty much gets you what you want anyway, I'll often be like, okay, yes, let's try that. And that way you're not always saying no. Um, you know, I, I try to say no as little as possible. You know, yes and th that whole, uh, 
improv idea. So making them a part of the process, letting them speak into the process and into the story, but again, staying in those same lanes, that's really key. Some directors aren't very visual at all. There are some directors that do not have a shot list. They come in, they'll block with their actors and the DP kind of has free reign and then there's some in the middle. It's just all about how you like to work, communicating that with your DP and going from there. But again, I am very visual, so I usually have a very strong idea of what it is I want to do, um, and I'll convey that and then, you know, ha leave room for growth and elevating the original plan. What's the best way to prepare a script that has been written by someone else? I've been reading a lot of scripts lately that haven't been written by me, and something that I like to do is write down all of the characters, who they are, what they're going through, what their arcs are, what the story as a whole means to me, find the theme in there that really clicks with me. So that's the story that I'm telling. It's a story about X. It's a story about grief. It's a story about broken marriage, you know, whatever it is. And then breaking that down and then looking at the greater scenes. These are the things that happen and then rereading it with those things in mind. And I find when I reread it, once I've broken it down uh, to some extent like that, you almost reread it as a writer, as if you wrote this thing, because you have those aspects in mind that you have in mind before you're writing it. So it attaches you to it in a totally different way. Uh, and then I'll just make notes as I go through uh, about different key moments and then I'll usually have ideas to shift things around, which helps make it a little bit more me, um, which isn't always necessary. I mean, I'm not moving things if it works in the script. I'm only moving it if it feels like it needs to change. But though doing those things does help you feel more attached to it, I've found. But doing it that way helps attach me to the story uh, a lot more deeply than it would just reading it otherwise. And then, of course, I'm reading it over and over and over again uh, until I'm really seeing this story in a way that you only do when you write it. Define what a director is technically and what is the true role he or she is playing in making things happen. Is it just telling everyone what to do or is there something else that the director is supposed to do besides being the boss? Thanks. You are the creative drive and vision behind the entire story. Um, in all of my experiences, that's how it has been. I have heard you know, it being done in other ways. But for me, that's the correct way for it to be done. It's that one, you know, unified vision, bringing everybody else together to make the thing like we were talking about before. And that can happen even in the development stages. Even if you're not the one writing the script, when you're in the development stage, you're the one talking to the writers and developing the story and putting together the overall pitch and treatment of what that thing's gonna be that you can then take to the studio to hopefully get greenlit. And then once it's greenlit, you're working with the writers to craft the whole story story and they're giving you versions of the script that you're giving notes on. So you're helping craft the whole thing. Again, working with your writers like you work with your DP or your actor. And that goes through the entire process. So you're really just stewarding the story from beginning to end to, you know, bring this uh, piece ultimately into what it's going to become. It goes through so many hands. It's almost like raising a child. You're there from square one to the ending and it's going to go through a lot of different experiences and there's going to be a lot of different people involved, but you're raising this thing and hopefully protecting it to ultimately, you know, let it go to college. I guess. <laughs> but now let's talk about domain.com, which has all your website needs, including .com and .net domain names. And I have been saying it lately that all of us filmmakers really do need a website, whether it's for your company or your own personal site, like the one that I have, which I just keep shamelessly plugging. <laughs> Maybe I should stop shamelessly plugging my own website at some or point. Or you don't. Or I don't. And then you just. I mean, there's nothing really on there but links to our short films, so I guess it's basically the same thing as the YouTube channel. But the point is, it's like a digital business card, really. I mean, some people have business cards, but the best thing to have, I mean, a business card with just a link to your personal site, I think would be the greatest business card of all time. But anyway, domain.com is the place to go when you're trying to piece that together. I have all kinds of domain names. I even buy domain names for every film title idea that I come up with just in the <laughs> slim chance that I actually make that film. I own the domain. And of course, the .com and .net are going to be the ones that are going to help you tell a story like no other. But they do have over 300 plus domain name extensions from .club to .space. And of course, as always, domain.com is reliable, but they're trying to make it even more affordable than it already is by giving you 15% off their already affordable prices. When you get domain names, web hosting, and email, just use a coupon code FILMRIGHT at domain.com to check out. And when you think domain names, think domain.com. So that's it for today, which means it's time for my suggestion of the week. And this is a short film done in Element 3D. Yes, 
This was made inside of Element 3D. Our VFX artist, Ryan Thompson, showed this to me last week and I was pretty blown away by what they were able to accomplish inside of Element 3D. It's just insane what you can do now compared to when we started 10 years ago, as previously discussed. So check that out, link in the notes below. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. Oh, 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 oh